Hey guys, and welcome back to Atomy Chemistry. Now, it's all well and good to have an understanding of what an acid is, and the kinds of reactions that they undergo. But, like many things, when it comes to exam time, you've got to have the numbers to back it up. So in this video, we're going to look at the number which describes acidity, known as pH, and we'll learn how to calculate it. So we'll start with an introduction to the pH scale, and then we'll look at the equation for pH, some sneaky rules for pH, and finally an example calculation. And if you want to know where this comes from in the syllabus, check out the dot points below the video. So if that sounds useful, let's get into it. Okay, so, using the pH scale to measure acidity comes back to the fact that acids produce hydrogen ions in water, and it's these hydrogen ions that give them their properties. So based on this fact, it makes sense that we want a scale which follows the rule the more hydrogen ions, the more acidic. pH stands for potential hydrogen, and it quite literally just takes the concentration of hydrogen ions in a solution, and spits out a number that we can use to compare acidity. So a solution with a high concentration of hydrogen ions is considered acidic, and will have a low pH. Whilst a solution with a low concentration of hydrogen ions is considered basic, and will have a high pH. So, to put some numbers to it, a solution with one molar concentration of hydrogen ions has a pH of 0, whilst a solution with a really low hydrogen ion concentration, so let's say 1 times 10 to the power of negative 14 moles per litre, has a pH of 14. I'll come back to this power of negative 14 thing, I promise. But before you ask, yes the pH can be a negative number, and it can go above 14. These are just the typically used endpoints. So smack bang in the middle is a pH of 7, which is considered neutral. So this is the pH of pure water. It's neither acidic nor basic. Then finally, to make this tangible, battery acid has a pH of around 1, lemon juice has a pH of around 2.2, coffee 5, baking soda 8.3, and ammonia 11. Not that you really need to remember any of these numbers, I just reckon that it's kind of boss knowing you're handling a pH of 2.2 if you ever drink straight lemon juice. Or maybe that's just me. Okay, so enough milling about, let's do some calculations. The equation we need is that the pH is equal to the negative log base 10 of the concentration of hydrogen ions in our solution. So you don't really need to know what a log actually is. You quite literally just need to be able to type the formula into your calculator. So, for example, if the hydrogen ion concentration was 0.01 moles per litre, you'd press negative on the calculator, then log, not lin, and then key in 0.01 before pressing equals to get an answer for the pH of 2. That's that. So, we now know how to calculate the pH of a solution if we're given the hydrogen ion concentration. But, of course, this begs the question. If we knew what the pH was, how could we find the hydrogen ion concentration? There's no such thing as dividing by log. What you need to do is change the subject of our equation, which again, you don't need to know how to actually do. But if you did, you'd find that the hydrogen ion concentration equals 10 to the power of negative pH. So if we put our pH of 2 back into this equation, so 10 to the power of negative 2, we'd get an answer of 0.01 moles per litre of hydrogen ions. So this is just the inverse of the first calculation. So now on screen we have our two formulae for converting between hydrogen ion concentration and pH. Now, two quick tricks for using the pH scale. Firstly, from what we've said so far, you should understand that the things which will cause an acid to have a lower pH are the things that cause a higher hydrogen ion concentration. So that's the acid's concentration, its strength, and how many acidic hydrogens it has. But more on that another time. Second trick. I did promise I'd stay away from too much maths, but using a log scale does come with one interesting property it's good to be aware of. The rule is that if the hydrogen ion concentration goes up by a factor of 10, the pH scale goes down by one point. So take our hydrogen ion concentration of 0.01. We know the pH is 2. If we multiply this concentration by 10, the pH goes to 1. If we multiply the concentration by 10 again, the pH goes to 0. 
Equally, if we divided 0 0.01 by 1000, so that's like dividing by 10 3 times, the pH should go up by, let's see here, 3 points, from 2 to 5. So this is a sneaky trick that can save you some time in calculations and also gets picked on in multiple choice. It also goes to show that while the difference in pH between lemon juice and battery acid may only be 1 point, battery acid actually has 10 times the amount of hydrogen ions, so don't go thinking it's an easy step up from the lemon tart to the battery acid. Alright, so to finish up, let's run through an example which should also help explain some of the factors influencing the pH of an acid. Calculate the pH values of a 0.1 molar solution of hydrochloric acid and a 0.1 molar solution of sulfuric acid, assuming both fully dissociate. So looking at our formula, we know that we need the hydrogen ion concentrations. Starting with our hydrochloric acid. Firstly, we should know by now that we can write an equation for the complete dissociation of a strong acid like so. And looking at the one to one coefficients, we can see that for each mole of hydrochloric acid, we produce one mole of hydrogen ions. So the concentration of hydrogen ions will also be 0.1 molar. Plugging this into our pH formula, we find a pH of one. Now repeating for sulfuric acid, we see that the key difference is that we get two hydrogen ions in our dissociation equation instead of one, meaning the concentration of hydrogen ions is 0.2 molar. Therefore, the pH is 0.7 to one significant figure. So we can see that with the sulfuric acid and a hydrochloric acid solution of equal concentration, the sulfuric acid has a slightly lower pH. And we can put this down to the fact that while both acids completely dissociate, each sulfuric acid has two acidic hydrogens. Let's wrap this video up. Today we learnt that pH is used to measure acidity, typically on a scale from very acidic at 0 up to very basic at 14. I've put the equations for finding pH from hydrogen ion concentration as well as going the other way around up on screen for you now. Bear in mind our rule that 10 times hydrogen concentration reduces the pH by 1 point as well as the fact that you will often need to use an equation to find out exactly what the hydrogen ion concentration is. And that's that, I'll see you all next time.